Wonderful. Love it. Love the opportunity today, not just because it's Father's Day, but just the opportunity to, to really honour and celebrate uh, fatherhood uh, and fathers that, uh, that come from all kinds of different uh, backgrounds, stages of life and in their journey. And uh, do you know in the Bible, one of, the, one of the, the most amazing things we see actually in Scriptures is the elevation of fatherhood. Like from, from the very beginning uh, in Genesis, you know, all the way through the Bible, the role or the position of fatherhood is something that has been esteemed. Not only has it been created by God, but it's actually been esteemed and elevated by God. You know, so much so that, you know, when Jesus spoke about how His heavenly Father relates to us, He says, I want you to pray this way, our Father who art in heaven. The, the, the idea of fatherhood is not just some construct that human beings have made up. It actually is a reflection in a big way of the heart of God. God, a loving Father. And, and I love in Scripture, in, in the Old Testament, particularly we see it. Uh, there's this idea in Scripture that being a father is more, far more than uh, simply a biological reality of having children. But actually we see in Scripture, there's this idea that fatherhood or to be a father literally meant to be a custodian of blessing. It's a beautiful picture in Scripture, a powerful idea that fathers were to be the bringers of blessing in their home, in their family. And, and, and God always elevates the role of fathers. He never diminishes it. And I love it in Scripture. There's a, there's a passage in the book of uh, Malak, Malachi. I was going to say Malachi, but it's not Malachi. It's the, it's the Italian prophet Malachi. But it's the book of Malachi. It's, it's, it's a prophetic promise uh, that's being spoken about uh, the latter days. And it speaks of what God would do. This, it actually speaks of a move of God on the earth that would happen. And it's pretty powerful. But it's, I find it fascinating that in the middle of this passage of Scripture in Malachi about this move of God, about the kingdom of God coming to earth, this is one of the promises that is made. It says, He, that's God, will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. How amazing is that? That when God is seeing the kingdom of God being established on the earth, which is heaven coming to earth, the reality of God and His rulership in, in our life, He actually positions fatherhood as central to that. And He says, in those days, when God begins to move, I will stir the hearts of dads, of fathers, of granddads, and their hearts will be towards their children. And in turn, you know, the Bible says it's, it, the, the, the order is important. When fathers' hearts turn towards their children, then their children's hearts will turn towards their fathers. It's, it's the picture of family. And it's the picture of, of what fathers bring into a family. You know what it is? It's the picture that fathers are supposed to be designed by God to be the custodians of blessing. That word custodian, it literally means this, a person who has the responsibility for taking care of and protecting something. I love what I heard from the dads today because I believe each of them today in each of their own ways was able to very clearly articulate that they were the custodians. They understood it. That they were the protectors of something valuable, something precious, something from God into their homes, into the lives of their children, into the dynamic of their family. They understood that there was a, a blessing that they could bring into their home and into their life. And I love that, that picture that God has of a father who understands that actually I'm a custodian of blessing into my children's lives. You know, in the Scriptures, there's a, a father by the name of Isaac. He has two sons. One son's name is Jacob. One son's name is, is Esau. And so there's these two sons. And as part of this story, the younger son, uh, Jacob, he ends up scheming in order that he would get the blessing of his father. You see, he was the younger son. By, by tradition, the blessing was supposed to go to the older son. His name was Esau, but Jacob wanted the blessing of the father. He schemes, he ends up getting this blessing from his father. Because there was a very powerful and real idea that they carried, that, that a father had a blessing 
And that could be transferred or passed on because a father was a priestly position in the home. It, it, was, it was to be a custodian of something valuable and precious. And, and the picture is that a father here can stand in this, this position as a priest in their home. And, and as they stand in this position as a priest, with, which just simply means with their faith in God, that actually God can move through them as fathers, as grandfathers, to bring this blessing that would actually then go through the generations. God says to, 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 to Abraham, or God says to Jacob, I'm the, I'm the God of your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There, there was this idea of a, a generational blessing that was, that was moving in this particular family. And I love that idea that God elevates, always elevates the role of fathers. And I believe in a culture that many times doesn't do that, that it, we live in a culture that many times loves to just highlight the mistakes or the, the shortcomings or the failures of a few dads. But I believe that actually that God's raising up fathers in this house and all across, I believe, our, our city who are standing as custodians of blessing, who, who are bringing change, not just in their own life through their faith in Christ, but are actually committed to seeing the kingdom of God come in their family, in their children's lives, in their grandchildren's lives. And they do that by occupying this position as the custodian of blessing in their life. You know, as a guy, there's, 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 there's many ideas about, you know, when we talk about what it means to be a man or what it means to be a father and, and, and uh, there's, there's all kinds of things from strength to sacrifice to commitment. I think one of the things that most definitely is wired within the heart of man is a desire to succeed. Uh, you know, there's a, I believe that there's a desire in the heart of men to, to overcome, to win in life. And when you look through history, you see, you see men who, 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 who desire to do that, to, to innovate, to create, to, to set records, to climb mountains, to, to achieve, to succeed. We, we have been created with a drive to win. But how many of you know that that drive to win many times isn't always about a mountaintop moment? You know, we were at, uh, we were at the rugby uh, just recently with our kids and uh, we uh, took them out uh, for a night out watching the, the Queensland Reds. And uh, we were there a couple of weeks ago. I took the three kids along and, and we were sitting there watching our team, which by the way, hasn't won a whole lot in the last 10 years. But we were there watching this game. And, and what happened was this, was for the first about 20 minutes, the Reds actually scored about three tries, almost unheard of. And so we were cheering like, yes, this is incredible. The first 20 minutes, there's three tries. Do you know after that, they, didn't, they barely scored a point at all. For the next 60 minutes of the game, Basically, the Reds the whole time, the team we were cheering for, just spent their whole time just basically making tackle after tackle. We were watching, you know, these guys for about 60 minutes of this game just, you know, spend most of the time on the ground. They'd, they'd make a tackle, they'd get back up, they'd go again. They'd make a tackle, they'd get back up, they'd go again. And there was such a sense when watching this game of a team here that had this desire to win, but knew that actually winning in life was not just about scoring a try. It wasn't just about a moment in time where we say we win. And what I loved it is I had our kids there and we were watching that and I think the, the end up, the tackle count for the next 60 minutes was the, the Queensland Reds made about 104 tackles to the other team making about four. And what I loved about it was because I, in that, I believe was such a, a powerful life lesson. And I was like, I'm glad my kids were there to see that, that actually, you know what? Winning in life is not just those glamorous moments. It's actually about a commitment to pick ourselves up and go again. It's about willing to make a sacrifice. It's about willing to do things that maybe others don't even see, the, the things that aren't glamorous. It's, a, it's about making a, a, a powerful statement in our life that actually this is not just about me right now, but I'm doing this for the people that are around me. And I believe that's not just a, a picture or a great picture about life or a great lesson about life. I actually believe it's one of the most powerful truths about fatherhood and the spirit of fatherhood, because being a father, I believe, is about exactly the same ideals, exactly the same values. It, true fatherhood is about staying committed. 
I'm staying committed in my family. I'm staying committed in, in, in my marriage. I'm staying committed to the things that I've promised in my life. Being a father is about making sacrifices. It's about, it's about working sometimes long hours. It's about turning up time after time in my life. Being a father is about many times just getting back up off my feet again that I might have felt like I've been knocked down. I might have felt like I've, I've had a setback, but I love it how one of the guys said before, I've learned how to just get back up. I've learned how to just say, I'm sorry. I've learned how to just go again. Being a father is about tapping into this inner strength from God to continue to believe God, to continue to turn up every day. And here's the thing, just like you see, and just like we saw that night in, in this team sport, in this game of rugby, it was actually about people. It was about men who weren't doing it for themselves. They were doing it for others. That's fatherhood. And I believe one of the greatest things that fathers bring is to model those values of strength, of commitment, of sacrifice, of unconditional love in their world. And today, I believe it's so important today that we honor all of our fathers today. And can I say to all of our dads and to all of our granddads, to all of our single dads, to all of our spiritual dads that are here today, you are champions. You are heroes. We celebrate you. We honor you. Come on, church. Let's bless all of our dads here this morning. You're incredible. And not only, I believe, is it important that we see in Scripture that God elevates the role of fathers. I believe in our church here as well. It's filled with dads who are doing an amazing job in their families and in their worlds. But here's what I've discovered, you know, discovered in life is that you know what, winning in life or succeeding in life many times is about how often and how willing you and I to get back up again. How, how, how willing and how often you and I are to get back up again. You know, uh, this year I turned 45 years old. I know what you're saying. I can't believe that, Andrew. Not possible. No, you didn't really say that at all, did you? <laughs> I'm 45 years old. In December this year, Wendy and I are going to be married for 20 years. Can you believe it? Give Wendy a big hand. That's, that's 20 years, people. That's amazing. 20 incredible years. Uh, and I'm the father to, to three children. Uh, our oldest, Haley, who's 16 years old. Our son, Joel, who is 13 years old. And actually, his first morning in our production team this morning up there doing the screens. Give it up for Joel this morning. He's down there. Good work, Joel. And our youngest, Sienna, who's 10, who's down the front here as well. But listen, I'm going to say this. I'd love to say that all the time, uh, over these last 16 years that I've been a parent or a dad, that I've always felt like on that I'm on top of my game. Do you know the truth is? There's barely a week that's gone by in that period of time where there's not some time through the week where I haven't felt like I've missed it or I haven't felt like I've fallen short or I haven't felt like I've, I've just stumbled in some way. That, 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 that's, the, that's what happens in life. But here's what I've seen. Many times we have an enemy who will try to play on that. He'll try to tell you, particularly to our dads, that there's no point, that you're not good enough, you've messed up one too many times, uh, you don't measure up. But let me tell you this morning, the Bible says this about our weakness. It says God knows our weaknesses already. And here's what the Bible says about our weaknesses. It says His strength, that's God's strength, is made perfect in our weakness. I love that. Just think about that. God says, you know where my strength goes to work? My strength is made perfect. It's made fully complete at that point of weakness in your life. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect or my strength is made perfect in weakness. And how many of you know the Bible says that you and I, we don't have to have, we don't have to have it all perfect. But the Bible says if you and I would just live our lives in such a way where we can say, hey God, there's this weakness in my life or there's this area over here. But God, I know today, your promise is to me that by the Holy Spirit, I can exchange my weakness for your strength. I can exchange the areas that I feel like I'm not quite measuring up, but I can exchange it for your grace and your power in my life. And how many of you know today, I'm just so thankful today that there's some, there's some areas in my life of weakness today. Why? Because that's actually the place of God's strength. And I wanna encourage you today, and I, I really felt like today that there's some dads here this morning, and you know what, how many of you know, 2020's been a pretty interesting year so far. 
There's been a few challenges along the way. There's been a few obstacles to overcome. Maybe you felt like that there's some, there's some battles that you've been walking through, but I actually felt this morning that maybe there's some dads that have come here today and you've just been fighting a battle with discouragement. You've just been fighting a battle. Maybe it's just that, man, I just feel like there's this stuff going on. There's things that are happening here and I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. And listen, I wanna give, share with you the scripture this morning. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and this is the apostle Paul speaking. He says, when we arrived in Macedonia, there was no rest for us. He couldn't find any rest. He said, we faced conflict from every direction. There were battles on the outside and there was fear on the inside. Maybe you feel like that today. Man, I'm facing some battles today out there. And if I'm honest, there's some fear going on on the inside as well about some of those things. The Apostle Paul, this is where he's, he's making a great exchange because listen to what he says. He says, I'm facing this, these battles on the outside and fear on the inside, but listen to what he says. He says, but God, who encourages those who are discouraged. I love that. You know, in the middle of what he was walking through, you know what the Apostle Paul did? He made this declaration. He said, you know what? I'm facing these things that are going on. But he says, but I'm looking upwards right now. And I'm declaring, but God. But God is able. Listen, whatever you're facing here this morning, those two words right there are the game changers. But God, maybe it's financial, maybe it's relational, maybe it's in your health, whatever it is. Can I tell you this morning, there is a but God who says he wants to come today. And listen what his agenda is. He says, I wanna come and encourage you when you're feeling discouraged. I love it. Can I tell you this morning, whatever you're facing today, even if you're facing discouragement in your world today, God is the God who says, I wanna come and fill your life with encouragement. You know what that means? God wants to fill your life with hope. He wants to fill your life with strength. He wants to fill your life with a new vision for your future. He wants to fill your life with peace and joy and everything in the kingdom of God. Can we please give God a great, great hand this morning? He's awesome.